Now, therefore, it be resolved, the House of Representatives, one, celebrates the 40th anniversary of the Apollo 11 lunar landing, two, honors the brave crew of the Apollo 11 mission, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins, and three, uh, commends all these individuals and organizations who contributed to such a historic achievement that continues to be the inspiration of the nation and the world. And now I would like to uh, present uh, the resolution to our brave astronauts. Commander um, Armstrong is not one that's known for filibustering, uh, but he has agreed to come up and share with us some memories. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am in the position of a pilot without his checklist. <clears throat> so I'll have to wing it. First, it's an honor for all of us from Apollo to be in this house. Uh, the congressmen share the responsibility of doing the people's business, and it is an awesome responsibility, and we, honor, we are honored to be here. When Sputnik first flew, it shocked all of us. Uh, but immediately, both in the Soviet Union and here in the United States, there was an immediate cry to expand and put humans into space. Within weeks, this was articulated widely. No one knew what kind of person could be persuaded to take the trip. Prisoners were suggested. Uh, soldiers could be ordered. Uh, photographers could take pictures, and they're expendable. Uh, uh, doctors understood limits, physiology, human limits. Finally, both sides picked pilots. Pilots were accustomed to being isolated in small spaces, and they actually seemed to enjoy being <laughs> up away from the surface of the earth. Uh, further, test pilots were particularly attractive because they were accustomed to flying things that had not been flown before, and running into problems and solving them and getting the craft back safely so others could fly them comfortably and reliably. This is where uh, the Mercury 7 did an outstanding job, and everyone knows their flights were outstanding, but I would point out something they did that was equally, or in my view, even more important. They ch changed the one-man spacecraft from a man in a can to a place where the pilot was an integral part of flying the machine. They insisted on having things like windows to see out, instruments that could be understood and interpreted and control systems that would work and be standard and obvious to normal pilots. For that, John and Scott and your colleagues, we thank you now and every subsequent astronaut is in your debt. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, so we solicited the advice I tried to find someone who could advise us on how to handle this new arena that we were involved in and uncomfortable with. Pete Conrad, our, one of our colleagues, had a family friend in Philadelphia who was the retired chairman of an advertising company, Mr. Harry Batten. And uh, we, we asked him, give this some thought and tell us your best advice. He thought a while and said, keep your nose to, your grind to the grindstone. Do the work. Above all, do your work. Second, save a little of your money and put it in blue chip stocks. <laughs> and third, never ever get the reputation of being a good speaker. <laughs> Mr. Batten would be pleased with me today. <laughs> Now, the matter of this honor that you are so remarkably, to me, presenting to us today. This was the apex of the space race, kind of the, the final heat going to the moon. And this race, was a relay race. Every flight was a leg of the relay. Starting with Apollo 7, who ran as long and hard as they could, each flight doing as many new things as they could possibly do in their flight to move us a little farther along the ladder towards success which when it arrived at the fifth flight that, uh, that we three were involved in, most all the work had been done. Most of the tough problems had been solved and we could approach those with equanimity and confidence. Mike would say to us, to, to Buzz and I, take it easy, everything's fine. All this stuff is easy. Don't worry. And we did. So we were the final leg of a relay race. And so we, we in the final leg, uh, get the medal. But in all honesty, every one of those previous relay participants deserves it as well or more than the three of us. And so I want to just say that in my heart, it's your medal, you guys, and thanks a lot.